Okay, so I was creating this nice looking uh, angular material form for my angular dashboard here. And I added some validations, uh, the required validations and some character validations here as you can see. And it shows up fine. But if I show you the code here, you can see that this is a traditional way of adding mat errors to the mat form field. And you can see that we have if conditions for each of the validations that we needed. But this was what I had before. Now, what if I told you that I can actually just remove all of this and I can just write mat error and give a little something here and I will get the same behavior as I did before. So now you can see the same field required, the same must be at least three characters and it works exactly the same. So what was the secret? Well, the secret is this custom directive app field error. This directive actually detects your validation errors for this specific control automatically and it shows your errors in the mat error. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I created this and it's going to clean up your uh, validation error logic code quite a lot in your templates. And of course, just as an aside, this uh, form section here, as you can see here, is part of my Angular dashboard starter template. If you like the code for this, you can get it on my shop. The link will be in the description. And if you get this right now, you are going to get all of the future updates for free as well. Okay, so let's get started. So let's create the directive that we need for this purpose, okay? Let's go in our terminal here and let's do ngg, not C, but D, we want a directive. And we have a shared directives folder here, as you can see here, in which we want to keep this directive. And we're gonna call this as field error, okay? So we have our new directive here. Okay, let's go in our directive here. And the selected is app field error, which is fine for our use case. If you want to change it, it's up to you. All right, now, so what we actually want to do here is that uh, this field error directive is going to be attached to our mat error element, which will just be that one mat error element for each form field here, as you can see. So this will be coming within the mat form field. So here what we want, we want two things basically, all right? So first we're going to use the dependency injection to actually get our form field. And how can we do that? Well, we can use the inject function and we can just give the mat form field here. So this is going to ensure that the parent mat form field is going to be accessible now in your directive here. Okay. And secondly, we need the mat error element. So, so we're going to say error element here. And this is going to be our element ref. Let's add element ref here as well. Okay. So this error element we need because we want to change its text, its error message based on the validation that we have. All right. Okay, next we want to find out what the validation errors uh, are for this specific control. How do we find it out? Well, we have the form field with us, but this form field is only going to be have a value or accessible in the ng after view in its um, lifecycle hook. So what we're going to do is we are going to use an ng after view in it lifecycle hook. And in this hook, we are going to first get our control. This will be the abstract control, okay? So we can just do this dot form field. And here then we have a form field control property, okay? Then we can get the ng control within that. Uh, ng control is the uh, building blocks of both the template driven and the reactive forms. Underlying we have the ng control which actually has all of the properties related to the form control. Okay, so we can do uh, control. And then we want the abstract control from this. So we are going to refer to the abstract control here. Now the abstract control basically has the observable events uh, that we can use to actually listen to and change the error message based on that, okay? So that is why we need this control here. Now, if you see the control type here now is abstract control here, okay? First, we're going to check whether the control has a value or not. So if it doesn't have a value, we are going to throw a new error here. And we're going to call this field error directive must be used within a mat form field with a form control attached, okay? So that the user knows that something is wrong, all right? And then next, what we're going to do is we are going to set up our events sort of subscription so that we can listen to the changes in the events when the user is uh, entering values or deleting values, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to do control dot events. We're not going to use status changes, which is was suggested by this AI here. We actually need to use the events. Now this events is basically a new API introduced, I think in version 18. So this is called the unified control events API. This contains your touched event changes, your pristine event changes, pristine and dirty, your value changes and your status changes, all four events. So we can be rest assured that whenever any of the events occurs, uh, this is going to get called because this is important. We want to show the error as soon as 
and the user changes anything on the form. Okay. So we have the controller events and then we can subscribe to it. And then within that subscription, let's create a Boolean to actually hold our state or conditions for when we should show the error. So we should show the error when the control errors is true and also the dirty or the controller touched is true here. Okay. So this is our condition in which our error should change or our error should show. But what error should we show? Because controller errors can have multiple errors set at one point. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the first error from our errors object here. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to do object.keys, control.errors and zero here. Okay. So then we're going to get that error message. And it's suggested to me that I create a function for this purpose. And I think that's a reasonable thing. So I'm just going to create a function here for that purpose. Get error message is going to take our error in terms of the type of the error, which is a string. And then I'm going to fill this up later on. Okay. Initially, we're just going to add two error messages here. So let's add those error messages here and let's say that, okay, instead of the switch statement, what we're going to do is we are going to just create an error messages object here like this. And the key is going to be our error that we have from the top here. We're going to do this field is required. And then we are going to do maybe the email one and let's do please enter a valid email address. Okay. So what we're going to do in the end here is that we're going to get our error message and this is going to be error messages and we're going to refer to the error here like this. Okay. Of course, we can also give it a type here if you'd like to. So we can do key string into string. Okay. And then we are going to just simply return the error message or we can also give an empty error message if the error message does not have any value here. Okay. And let's just return a string here like this. All right. So we get an error message in these two cases. Okay. Great. So then after that, as our AI has suggested correctly, we're just going to refer to the error element, native element, the text content for that native element. And we're going to assign the error message there. And if, for example, we don't have to show the error message, that means that there were no errors or the errors were cleared. We are going to just set the text content to empty. All right. Simple enough. I think it's time to test this out. Let us go in our form component here and let's start to add this here. Okay. So instead of this, what we're going to do is we're going to do mat error and mat error here. And then we're going to import our app field error directive here. Of course, I think we also need to import it here. So, sorry, field error directive like this and import from this. So it's importing from our shared field error directives here. Okay. Okay. So moment of truth. So let's try this out here and you can see that we have our first name here. So let's try entering that and blur out and you can see the field required is appearing really nice. But what's happening here? You can see that it's not giving the minimum length validation correctly. And that is because we haven't added handling for that yet. Now, why don't we add handling for it yet? Because it requires a bit more work. If you look at the validators API docs here on angular.dev, you're going to see that when we add a minimum length here, it actually gives back this error object in case that hint. So we actually give, it actually has a required length value within that object that we have. Okay. So we need to access this value to actually show the correct message that, okay, this is the minimum that we need to show on the error. Okay. So how do we access that? So we need to increase, uh, improve the uh, error message function a bit more. So let's go back to our uh, code here. And let's go back to our field error directive here. So basically what we need to do is we need to also get the value of the control dot error, not only the key here, we are just sending the key here. All right. So we're going to also send the error here. We can do maybe first error. And this is going to be control dot errors and first error here, something like this. And now my AI is suggesting to me that, okay, I need to send in the first error value here as well, but we don't have it entered in the get error message. So let's add this here. And here, let's add our error value is going to be of type any because it can be an object as well. Okay. Of different structures. And then next, what we want to do is we want to also add a provision for a function here. Okay. In my error messages object here. So we could also specify a function which will generate that specific message that we want. Okay. So let's also add a type here for error value any, which gives back to string. And then for minimum length and for maximum length, we can add this function here. So we get the error value 
and we get this message derived from that. It uses a required length, as you can see, within that error value, exactly as we had in our validators here, in our documentation here, you can see. And similarly, we can also add then for others as well, we can also add it for minimum here, as you can see. And so for minimum, it really must be at least error value. And we also need to, and if you look at the documentation here again, for minimum, we actually need to have this minimum here, basically. Okay, so we can just give dot minimum and dot maximum here. Okay, so I think we have it sort of complete here. We have the basic things done. One thing as well, you can see that it has added it automatically. My AI is that it's also checking for the error message here, whether it's a function or not. So if it's a function here, it's going to call this function and get that value and return that. Otherwise, it's just going to return the string that is getting the static string that is getting in these cases. Okay, so it incorporates all of the things that we need here. Okay. Let's save this and let's go back to our name here and you can see that the field required is working and then we also have this at least characters working as well. Now we also have a maximum thing. Let's just test this out as well and you can see that we have if it's more than 100 characters which you don't want to send. Maybe you have an API or you have a server side which cannot handle that. So we need to have a validation here. So our directive here looks good. One last thing that we need to do is obviously this is a subscribe block. So we need to add some unsubscription logic here. So for that, I'm going to use the until destroy package until destroy. And let's import this from here. Import until destroy from this. And then we need also to add a pipe here and we can do until destroy this. It's going to import it from the same. So whenever this directive is destroyed, this it's ND on destroy is called. It's going to clean up this subscription as well. Okay, so our directive here looks good. Now let's go ahead and change up all of our and reduce this code, all of this, and let's see how much benefit we are getting from this. So currently we are getting about lines here, about 25 lines here for our template here. Let's use AI for this purpose instead of doing it manually. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to do control A and I'm going to go in control K. So this is cursor I'm using. I'm just going to say that, okay, replace all of the field error and app field error directive instead uh, similar to the first name field. Okay. And let's see what it does. And now you can see that it's going to parse through the whole file and it's going to do our work for us. And you can see it has replaced this with this, replaced this with this, replaced this with this. I love AI for these purposes at least, <laughs> okay? So there's still some boilerplate because you need that mat error, but it is drastically reduced. And now you can see that we have about 243 uh, lines here, and this is sort of a smallish form here. Great, so now let's just test this out and see how this looks. And you can see that we have our validations here working perfectly. Let's see the first name, that's fine. The last name as well. The email one, let's check this out. Okay, so if we go out of this again, you can see that it has an intervalid email address here and we can do it like this. And for the food number, I've added a validation for the length. You can see that it says that, okay, it must be at least 10 characters. Similarly, for the street address and stuff, I have added some reasonable, some things like, for example, it has to be a minimum three characters. Just something that I found suitable for my use case, but obviously you might have other validations. You can keep continue adding these to your field error directive here to actually change this and you can use it in any form component that you would like to. It will also make your errors consistent. Okay, let's just try out one thing. And the great thing about this is that it's all automated. So it's going to get it from the, your form groups itself, whether you're using the template driven forms or the reactive forms. So let's say, for example, we remove the email uh, validation here. The great thing is that we don't have to do anything else. We can just simply go reload the page and voila, we don't have the email validation applied anymore. You can see that there's no validation applied. We didn't need to change anything in the template itself. Great. So this is a practical example of the power of directives in Angular. And you can really combine them and create reusable behaviors that you can use across your application, cleaning up your code and making your code easily maintainable for the future. So I hope you liked this video and again, if you would like to get access to this code, you can get this whole template on my shop. It's available in the link in the description. 
Uh, if you get this right now, you are going to get all the lifetime updates as well. And I'm going to develop this further a more, uh, into a killer starter template for Angular. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with another interesting video.